what is up youtube welcome back to the channel panda here this is the second time i'm recording this video because i recorded almost the entire video and realized my mic was muted but we are back welcome to the channel i hope you guys enjoy your time with us we are going to be talking about Immortal Codex. It's back in the game. It's been in the game for a few days now, and I'm really, really excited to sort of dive in and see, you know, what progression we have made. I also am definitely interested in seeing what kind of progression you guys have made. Let's also talk about that brand new Boreas boss, the Arbiter of Frost. Let's dive right into it. and welcome back guys like i said immortal codex is back in the game you can access it here through the event tab you'll see that it just started a few days ago and it will be here until the 20th which is about almost 15 days roughly 15 days away uh from being over which means you have plenty of time to try and make some progression uh you will see that i have actually already made some progression in here i have went ahead and did my conqueror and my wasteland titan and you'll see that we are in the top five percent um, this is kind of the place that like, I think most accounts should try to aim for is like either top 5% or top 10%, I think is kind of the, the good middle ground for most people. Of course, top 100, I mean, I feel like you have to be a whale to get top 100. Maybe that's not the case, but some of these scores are ridiculous. I mean, if we go and look at the bottom score of top 100 versus my score, I mean, that's 700,000. That's almost, I mean, that's 70% more damage on top of what I am dealing, which is crazy, right? I mean, I feel like there's no way, right? <laughs> You'll also notice that like there's a lot of these champions are the very specific champions, right? Very few people are using anything quote unquote different, right? <laughs> um, so I'm definitely interested to see, you know, what kind of progression some people have made. I'm definitely interested to see what you guys have done, but I think I've done a pretty good job here. Um, there is some stuff that I could do. Like, for example, I really think that Cerberus should be doing more. Um, like if we go and we look at like these top people, you'll see that Cerberus is doing like insane damage. Um, and I'm really trying to figure out, you know, what is it about mine that's making it so it's not doing that much damage. I think realistically the answer is, A, I don't have his ultimate fully skilled, and B, this additional, t like, what is it, 0.4%, I think? Uh, let's see what it is. Uh, oh, no, it's actually only 0.2%, uh, right? Let's look at that again. 1.2% to one target, stacking up to three targets. And this is 1% of max HP. One, yeah, so it's it's only 0.2%. So it really isn't a ridiculous amount. I guess it's just a, a gear thing, right? It must just be a gear thing. Let's see if we can maybe try to push it a little bit harder. Um, let's see here. We can swap this. And then we can swap. I had a, is it this one? No, which one is it? I think it's this one boom there we go so it's not like a crazy set um but 334 percent crit damage and let's get let's compare that to the number one person again and let's just see what we're at so 316 um which actually means mine's more it's eight and 19k attack so he's got a lot more attack though He's attack, 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 right? So that would that would be the real the, the real difference there. And of course, his is A5, which gives you a ton of other things. Um, but, you know, there is definitely some potential here. Uh, let's go ahead and put this set onto Aatrox. Um, and then you've got the Realm Tear. We also need to put on the Zilla 2 gear onto Valkra. Um, and then A-Bomb needs some gear. We'll put on the Valeria set onto him. And he is going to get, he's going to get the Wailing Skull. And then we've got Volka who is in tank gear. Let's put her in some DPS gear if we can. 
do I have? Here's my hex gear. Boom. There we go. Put on the hex gear. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna upgrade that. And then we have um Vladov. And Vladov can go in this set. All right, so let's give this a try. I'm just gonna do an auto fight and I just wanna see what kind of progression we can make. I'm only gonna do this once. I'm not gonna like spam this out, but I wanna see if we can make any more progression because the, the first fight I did, I didn't optimize all of my stuff. I just kind of, you know, threw stuff down. Um, it would be really cool if we were able to look and see what, like the placement of everyone's stuff, which maybe you can, and I just haven't noticed it. Uh, but I really wish that that could be something we could do. And if there is something we can do, let me know, because I would love to look into that. Um, just to be able to see what everyone is doing. But here we go, getting into the official actual fight here. Um, and let's see what we can do here. So we put down our Aatrox right away uh, because we want to save our Cerberus for kind of as long as we can so we can get the most value out of him. Um, plus, Cerberus can't be revived, but Aatrox can. So I put the Aatrox in front of my Valk so that my Valk can revive my Aatrox. We get that damage pool that he provides, and then he also is alive again to be able to do his damage all over again. Then once he dies the second time is typically the time where you're going to see Cerberus get placed down because at that point things aren't going to die as quickly because my um, guy is dead, right? So this is where we place down the Cerberus and we start kind of just destroying in the damage meters because Cerberus does a ton of damage. Uh, and you'll see he's healing a lot, right? He's healing a pretty good chunk, um, which is really nice. Uh, but here we go. We are starting to get to the point where Cerberus is dying. There's a big chunk of damage there. He dies. But we get a ton of score here. I think that is actually an increase for sure. Um, I'm not sure by how much. I feel like that was a decent increase though. Let's see what that put us up to. Yeah, so that is a new record, which is exciting to see. Quite a bit more damage on um, our Aatrox here. And a decent chunk more damage on the Cerberus as well. Um, I do kind of want to try something, though. Um, top 3%. Look at me go. Um, I want to try something. And I kind of want to place Cerberus really early. I want to just place Cerberus down right away. Okay, we'll do this, we'll do that. And the reason I want to do this is because he gets more damage, um, if I remember correctly, um, after he dies, right? So it could potentially make sense to do something like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this as well. Alrighty, here we go. Now we'll go ahead and drop down our Valk. And I'm just going to put everything on auto. Um, because it just kind of makes sense to put everything on auto. Personally, I feel. Um, we'll go ahead and drop Aatrox down here as well. Because it's not going to really hurt him to be on the field. Drop down the... Serb ult. I don't know if this is going to actually make a difference in terms of like the damage that we're able to do because Serb's actually just surviving. Um, like he's actually just still alive. Like I, I kind of expected him to die a little bit sooner um, so that I could get him back sooner. So now I'm worried it's actually going to end up leading to less damage. <laughs> um, <coughs> we'll see what happens, I guess. But here is where things really start to kind of pick up. We're starting to kill things at a little bit of a faster pace. Things are spawning faster. Um, and yeah, here comes the heal. So there goes Cerberus. Cerberus is down. Um, yeah, I don't know if we're going to survive, survive another minute, which is kind of crazy. Here is the Aatrox first death. Um, we've hit S. I do feel like this is going to end up being less damage overall. Because I don't think we're going to survive 30 seconds to place Cerberus down again. But maybe we will. I'm not sure. We might. 
we might let's place down our Aatrox again. Yeah, I definitely don't think we're going to. Oh, it's so close. Oh, <laughs> yeah, not quite, not quite enough to really make a difference. I do think the other strat is better. Um, I mean, obviously, we know it's better, right? Because we're seeing the, the, the numbers. Of course, Cerberus is doing more damage because he's on the field longer. So that does make sense, like mathematically. But overall, I mean, I think that that went pretty well. We're going to do quickly one run of the healing uh, event here. And I'm pretty sure everyone is in the gear that I want them in. I did actually... Let me find, because I did make a couple Warlord sets um, that turned out pretty nicely, if I remember correctly. I think healing effect. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah, this one actually turned out pretty nice. Oh, let's see if we can get... Let's actually have an event going on right now. Let's see if this rolls nicely. Oh, that's actually nice. Let's see if we can get our, our people just a little bit stronger. So that's nice. We get a little bit of extra attack speed, which I think is really good and helpful. Um, let's see what else we can do here. Um, bum -bum. Yeah, she's pretty much about as good as we can get, right? She is an HP based healer. She doesn't have like a lot of HP though. Hmm. This feels like it's actually just better overall. Even though it feels kind of wonky. Let's see if we can just find a. Uh... Let's go for Life Force, Immortal Warrior, Salvation, I guess. And then we'll just look for HP bonus. Hmm. Let's see. This isn't a bad piece. <clears throat> I kind of want like healing effects, attack speed, like that kind of stuff. Hmm. I think we'll come back and we'll we'll look. I do think I really do want to swap this though. I think that this actually is just a better piece. It's not Oh, that's a nice attack speed roll. Let's go ahead and swap that in. That just feels better. Um so we'll give that a try. If I remember correctly, everyone else is geared quite well. Let's just double check and make sure. He's very tanky. And this, of course, is definitely geared. Okay. So let's give this a try. I'm going to run this on auto. And I just want to see how well it performs. Obviously, you saw we got up to top 4% uh, in our previous run. <laughs> But we did make a couple gear changes before the video, and I did just make a few there right now, specifically for our Eloin. Um, this is kind of the best setup that I've found, uh, and it basically just relies on ignoring the top left one, right? Like that one up there. We just ignore it. Um, of course, we get some healing on it because Nissande's heals will bounce over there, um, and you know shields will happen from Vortex. But the majority of the heals are focused on the four on or the three on the right side, uh, the first two on the left side, and of course the main Iona. Um, and then, of course, keeping all of our own characters alive as well. Um, and everyone is kind of inside everyone else's uh area right so that we can get as much uh, single target max increase heals etc and you'll see it works pretty well i mean we make it very far into the fight before people start taking like significant damage again of course other than that one left healer over or one yona over there i'm sorry uh, but eventually it gets to the point where like the damage is so much that it just one shots us right which is coming up here very soon 
Uh, I think it's like one or two more away. Oh, right there. Yep. <laughs> we lost two people. Uh, we're still in it. We're still in it. And now we're out of it. <laughs> yep. Now we're out of it. So that is the most we're going to get is 100 or 1.42 million. I don't remember what I had before. I feel like that was a higher number, though. It was a higher number. There we go. So that is exciting. Um, the only thing that really sucks about this team is that we are reliant on um, Vortex Shields, right? And Gwen Gwendolyn Shields. And you see, Gwendolyn doesn't get any credit um, for Shields because for whatever reason, it's not built in that way. So you don't actually see um, her what she's providing uh, but she is of course providing something really well you can see the shields on everybody which is really nice uh it definitely seems like madon is not the greatest here of course right the healing is just not crazy but of course she's mainly there because she provides that cleanse let's see what this pushes us up to maybe this pushes us up to top three top four still that is okay though uh let's take a look because i am kind of curious yeah so madon does just doesn't heal a lot for most people um which isn't super surprising. Let's check out this one's Madon. Yeah. Yeah, so that makes sense. She's mainly there just for the cleanse, which kind of makes sense, right? But let's go ahead and look at this final boss. I don't know if there's a place to see it in here. I don't think there is. Um, we'll quickly go grab our summons here. But we can go and look at the Immortal Codex new boss here which tells us everything we need to know about the Boreas fight, the Arbiter of Frost. We are coming up on about 17 minutes, so I'm going to make this quick um, because, of course, we will do another video of us actually playing through this for the first time. But he has extremely high defense, magic rest, and damage reduction, but also takes increased continuous damage. So we need to have things that deal ignite, poison, etc., uh, which is really exciting. The Arbiter of Frost periodically generates cryo cores, which the commander must shatter in a given period of time. Deployed heroes will deal continuous damage to the Arbiter of Frost, or his cryo, tier cryo cores will regain HP. When they're shattered, the Arbiter of Frost will enter a weakened state, taking further continuous damage. If cryo cores are left intact, they will continue to crystallize and deal heavy damage to everybody, which is really, really bad. So yeah, this kind of makes sense, right? We're looking at things, people who can burn. We're looking at people who can poison, right? Which this all makes sense, right? So Anai is going to be really good. Lust, right? All of these people are going to be really good in these places. So I am really curious to see uh, what kind of team comp is going to make sense. I think we're going to see a pretty large infernal comp coming in and also a pretty large nightmare comp coming in because you can look here and you can see we've got salazar we've got arrogance we've got lust um you know and then you just bring in like a torador you know or whatever um lord you have a wrath even uh who also does burning and you have a lot of stuff in there you can also come in with you know the twin fiend or sulcadens comp using the zillatu the anai and the hex could see some really good potential there and then of course we have the sort of man of the hour which is cuke down here who is actually very very good from what i have heard from other people so but yeah you can see all of these burning heroes make sense um i am kind of curious if orem's gonna be good i'd be excited to see that we'll see though but yeah, I think I think I'm what what I'm going to personally probably end up using is going to probably end up being an infernal comp um, because it just kind of makes sense. They're very well built on my account, right? I have hex, I have Zilla two, um, you know, I have uh, Pyros, uh, and I also have an eye, so I may end up building an eye and using her in there. So we have the triple DPS. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, definitely can say, definitely start building up these champions uh, if you haven't already. Most of the champions that you see here are champs that if you get them, you're going to build, right? There's a few like Nassault who you probably wouldn't build right away. Uh, Lassier, maybe you're not going to build right away. You maybe don't need him 100%. Orum, you're probably not going to build right away. And of course, Cuke and Screef, probably not, right? Like I have a Cuke built, but he's not really built, right? Like let's go and look. You can see where my Cuke is um maybe uh where is he i actually maybe don't even have a cuke built i thought i had a cuke built i don't even have a cuke built at all okay crazy i thought i did 
I guess I must have been thinking about a Lucas here. Um, yeah, I had a cute build at one point. I think I probably used it for food um, at some point because I didn't really need him anymore. But he's pretty easy to get my hands on. You can buy him in the shop even a lot of the times. So overall, I think we're into a really fun time where we get to experience experiment with this new boss and kind of see what our accounts can do like i said i think i'm gonna probably end up using the sort of zilla 2 comp with uh you know nocturne uh i'm sorry not nocturne hex um you know and maybe even build up my anai who's down here somewhere here's my anai um because she seems to be really nice there as well so we'll, we'll see what happens it's definitely something that i am contemplating doing uh we'll have to look and see kind of what everyone else is doing we'll definitely have a video about that uh when it comes out of us actually going in and testing the fight for the first time but anyways guys if you like the video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button leave a comment down below with where you've rated so far on conqueror and the titan and what kind of team comps are you looking forward to using in the arbiter of frost don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we are trying to make a push for 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year i would really appreciate it if you guys could help me get there as soon as possible and that's gonna be it for me today guys i hope to see you in the next one peace